Thanks for joining me. I'm CBS Philadelphia investigative reporter Liz Crawford. Over the next half hour, we'll examine a case involving a badly injured toddler that left a family forever changed. A South Jersey police officer says he's trying to get his life back after he was charged with assault on a child. In February, a judge dismissed the case against him, ruling the prosecution failed to present enough evidence to prove the toddler's injuries were the result of child abuse and not an accident. In a story you'll only see on CBS News Philadelphia, I talked with the police officer and the toddler's mom about what they call a tragic accident followed by an onslaught of accusations they claim are false. Anthony Minguez says it all started Super Bowl Sunday of 2023. It took more than a year before a judge was asked to dismiss the case. She tossed it, but Minguez says the damage is done. He says his reputation and relationships will never be the same. Anthony Minguez said his girlfriend Heather needed to get some things done, so he agreed to take care of her two-year-old son for a few hours. I offered to watch her so she could do errands. He said he'd watched the boy a few times before and was used to his tantrums. Say hi, Anthony. Hi, Anthony. So when he woke up from his nap, he's head banging, he's kicking, he's pushing, and I go to grab his water to see if he wants his water, push his ass, push his ass away. Minguez says he picked up the toddler and tried to calm him down. When he went to grab his snack, he just goes whack, and I just, I, I literally just lost him. By the time I spun to try to catch him, he was already hitting my, uh, because he landed on my foyer, already hitting my foyer. The boy landed head first on the tile floor. Literally the most gut-wrenching thing I've ever saw. At first, he says the boy screamed. They always say crying's good, right? That means he's always alert. But then there was a change in the child. I see his eyes roll in the back of his head. That's when Minguez says his training as a police officer kicked in and he started CPR and checked for a pulse. And I do not remember even dialing 911. But he did call. Okay, what did he fall from? Uh, he just fell. I was about to get picked him up from sleeping, and he literally just fell right on the freaking tile floor. Once EMTs arrived and took over, Minguez is seen here calling the boy's mom on this body camera footage we obtained from Minguez's attorney. The EMTs determine the boy has a pulse and check for other injuries. His, his Daddy, how is he? Uh, he's breathing and what the it's good. Yeah, and they just say he hit his heart. He hit his head pretty hard. Heather arrives just in time to ride in the ambulance with her son to Nemours Children's Hospital in Delaware. Minguez followed behind in a car. I felt helpless, to be honest. It's like, you want to do, we can't help your kid, and you have no idea how to do it, you know? Heather Rappa said she told doctors to do anything to help her son. The ER doctor said he's got a bad concussion, a serious concussion. He goes, I'm not going to. Uh, downplay. It's a serious concussion with a minor brain bleed with minor swelling. He said it's the most common head injury of a toddler. Minguez and Rappa say once the boy was admitted to the hospital, a new team of doctors determined he would need surgery due to brain swelling. The surgery was successful, but the boy stayed in the hospital for nearly two weeks. To this day, Heather says she still doesn't know why her son had to stay. She showed me a letter she received weeks later from the insurance company, stating that some aspects of the hospital stay were not medically necessary. He was literally at the hospital, sitting in a hospital bed with nothing hooked up to him. Zero. However, during that time, Minguez and Rappa say something changed. I thought that day I did the right thing. Like, I called 911, and the next thing you know, allegations of suspected child abuse. Did you ever question what Anthony had told you? No, not once. Prosecutors charged Anthony Minguez with aggravated assault on a child and endangering the welfare of a child, citing not just the child's head injury, but also other bruises on the boy and an eye injury. Evidence included recorded statements to police made by doctors at Nemours. This kid was beaten by somebody. Not typical for accidental trauma. This is uh, disproportionately severe. So the story we're getting from the caretaker is that the baby kicked both, like out of his arms, could that have created um, that hemorrhaging? So would that be consistent with what the uh, caretaker saying, that injury? No. No. I've been doing this for 20 some years. I would, I would equivocally state there's a 0% chance that that is what actually happened. 
Heather said she and the boy's father wrote to investigators explaining the bruises were caused by normal playing, bumps and falls. The bruises on the knees, like what two year old do you know doesn't fall? Minguez was still charged and immediately suspended from his job as a police officer. Everything happened all at once. It's like my world, my, literally just my world was completely turned upside down. It was just, I mean, the, the stress has been, it's been a nightmare. It's been hell. Over the last year, Minguez says his mental health has deteriorated. His relationship with Heather fell apart and due to the child abuse investigation by DCF, he wasn't allowed to have contact with the boy. I've been seeing a therapist. Depression is an understatement. There was some dark times. There's some really, really dark times. DCF determined child abuse allegations were not established, as noted here in a letter Heather showed me from the state. These are the supposed to be the experts of child abuse in our state. And they cleared me. But yet, the police have charged me. I mean, make that make sense. <sighs> Did it's, you ever think, like, what if I get convicted of this? Yeah. I can tell you one thing right now, I wouldn't have did one day in jail probably. I would have, I don't even want to say that, never mind. I, it was that bad. It was that bad. It was horrible. And to watch my, uh, my mom and dad, so that, I'm sorry. This past February, more than a year after the incident, a judge dismissed the case, saying the prosecution did not have sufficient evidence to prove injuries were caused by abuse and not an accident. Does it change the way you look at police? 100%. Does it change the way you look at the law? I love my job too, it's the saddest part. I love, I love being a police officer. I actually love where I work. Minguez's uniform has been hanging on a door, untouched for more than a year. He says he's still waiting on word he can return to work and trying to piece back together his life. To be accused of this, it's always going to forever be there. It's just, I mean, it's changed me. CBS News Philadelphia reached out to Nemours Children's Hospital. A spokesperson emailed, Nemours is committed to protecting the personal health information and data of patients in our care and therefore cannot comment on specific cases. We are committed to following all legal requirements in reporting suspected child abuse. The Salem County Prosecutor's Office said, In the wake of the court's ruling in this matter, our office would like to re-emphasize that it is our obligation to protect our most vulnerable without fear or favor. We continue to be proud of the difficult work put in by the officers and prosecutors tasked with handling this case who have done just that. Although we are disappointed in the ruling, we respect the court's decision. Heather, by the way, told me her son is doing great today, completely back to normal. I asked Nemours what the protocol is when child abuse charges that stemmed from a report by a Nemours doctor are dismissed or dropped. They did not answer that question. Anthony and Heather say they are now considering suing the hospital for damages. Now I'm going to share with you more aspects of this case. You see, Anthony Minguez was charged, then indicted by a grand jury, and then his attorney fought to get the case dismissed, which is ultimately what a judge did earlier this year. We'll hear from the judge in a bit, but first we have some excerpts of doctors' interviews with police investigators. The doctors state their opinions as to what might have caused the boy's injuries. These interviews were presented to a grand jury and became a focal point of the judge's decision. Again, she ruled there was not sufficient evidence to support a claim of child abuse. That this is not consistent with a fall. This is uh, disproportionately severe um, and indicative that uh, there were more significant forces that the child had had to withstand um, in the injury event. These are excerpts from an interview between detectives and a different doctor at Nemours. Here's some of that exchange. Okay, so I am a detective with Cornish Point PD. Uh, my name again is... I'm also here with, with the prosecutor's office. She's a detective there. Um, so I know from the hospital staff there's concerns with the injuries. We've already talked to Dr. Uh, about some of these and she referred us also to speak with you um, about the, the some of the in injuries including the hemorrhaging in the head and then the bruising on the scalp well he had bruising all over his body i mean he had all that on the scalp he had you know he had you know he had i don't know a dozen bruises on his body i deal with trauma in general i mean i deal with you know just you know problems with the brain and spinal nerves etc i did his surgery when he came in and so This is, this is just classic, um, you know, not accidental trauma. 
Now, a few minutes later in this same conversation, detectives ask again if the source of the injury could have been accidental. Take a listen. So that's some of what the doctor said. Anthony's attorney didn't buy it. We'll hear from the attorney before we give the judge the final say in her own words from the bench. That's coming up. Welcome back. The doctor's opinions were challenged by the defense, which argued that they were completely wrong. I talked with criminal defense attorney Rich Kleinberger, who represents the man at the center of this case, Anthony Minguez. So what happened here was there was a horrible accident and child gets rushed over to the ER. And during the initial assessment, it seems that for whatever reason, there came this determination that this was not an accident, that it had to have happened due to a purposeful act on the part of someone, which I thought was a huge erroneous leap to make without someone truly looking to see the location where it occurred, the um, area where the child was impacted, um, the height of where he fell from, all those things should have been taken in consideration. It then set into motion a whole chain of events that you know an innocent person was criminally charged and for a year of his life, which he will never get back, has been deemed to be a child abuser. Okay, so um, let's look at the judge's decision to dismiss the case um, in February. So, yes. you know, this was more than a year after the incident. Correct. Um, what was the judge's um, reasoning for that? Uh, I give the judge a lot of credit. She cut through everything, made the legal determinations that need to be made, but truly said in the end, this was an accident and that there was no evidence presented at the grand jury to show that this was anything more than an accident. The doctors have an obligation to report suspected child abuse, and we, of course, want them to do that. So they did, you know, th then, you know, Anthony finds you, you win the case, it's dismissed. Um, this, the system worked. Can we say that? Did the system work? The system did ultimately work, but I think what we have to look at here is we have an individual, um, you know, first I look at my client, Anthony, and here we have someone for a year of his life, which he can never get back, was taken away from him. Um, he was suspended from work. He every day had to sit there and think to himself how he's not allowed to work. He's you know, not allowed to be around this child that he had a bond with. He was deemed to be a child abuser. Accidents happen and for someone and in this case, many people to have their lives impacted for over a year is disturbing. So in the end, did the system work? Yes. Did justice prevail? Yes. But at what cost? Mm. And that's what I have to look at. And hopefully this is something that in the future will not occur again. Anthony did get the matter properly dismissed without having to spend time in jail, without having to wait around without having to go through the time and expense of a trial. Mm. But still, it's at a great expense to him mentally and emotionally. This past February, more than a year after the incident, Superior Court Judge Linda Lawhon dismissed the case, ultimately finding the prosecution did not present enough evidence to prove the boy's injuries were caused by abuse. Here's a portion of the audio recording from that day in court. There's no question the child was harmed. What evidence is there that was presented to the grand jury that the defendant knowingly caused the harm? What evidence is there presented that the defendant knew that harm would cause the child to be considered um, abused or neglected? By my reading of the uh, transcript, 
the only evidence that was presented to refute the version of events that was presented by the only adult who was with this child is that two doctors, according to the testimony of Dr. Nguyen, said that those injuries are disproportionate to the defendant's explanation of the child falling onto the floor. And at page 36 of the transcript, he reiterated that. The charges were brought. A grand juror asked why the charges were brought. Because two doctors said the injuries to the child are disproportionate to the explanation that the defendant's providing. The grand jurors clearly wanted to understand what this meant. If you look at the transcript, at page 25, a juror asked, did the hospital think it was abuse? Did they come out and say that? Appropriately said, we don't have that information. A juror asked, the one doctor said the injuries were disproportionate. Is there any more detail about that? Said, that is the information the state is presenting with no further information at this time. In this particular matter, I find that the presentation to the grand jurors was certainly well prepared, efficient, and direct, giving them the basics of what the prosecutor thought was necessary to establish the elements. But it's difficult to find that the prosecutor provided sufficient evidence to establish that these injuries were not caused by an accident. The mere fact that the doctor said they were disproportionate to the defense explanation is not sufficient. What in the world does that mean? I don't know what it means. I have a law degree. I've heard cases for 12 years now on the bench. I don't know what that means. Does it mean disproportionate because there are too many injuries, because of where they're located? What does that mean? Nobody knows. The jurors clearly wanted to know, and all they were given was an opportunity to hear from their fellow juror who works for an ophthalmologist. That calls into play the point made by Mr. Kleinberger that that person should not have been encouraged to discuss it during jury deliberations, and in fact probably should have been asked not to participate in those deliberations. It's entirely likely that the jurors would rely upon what their fellow jurors said because they had absolutely nothing else to help them understand what these injuries meant or how they could have occurred. For those reasons, I grant the motion to dismiss this indictment. So what's next for the child, his mom, and for Anthony? Well, Heather and Anthony are back together. They tell me the child is doing well. Anthony says he's still waiting for the okay to return to work. And both Heather and Anthony say they are considering suing the hospital for damages. If you have a situation or tip or experience that needs investigating, we want to hear from you. Email us at investigations at cbs3.com. I'm CBS Philadelphia investigative reporter Liz Crawford. Thanks for watching.